Kidding after you just die, always have to take care of us and watch your town. Which is frustrating, but that's the story. Like having a pet that can't see you and stuff like that. But I'm going to come back to my friend so she can have pizza. We'll leave her in the freezer under my cover and it's doing great now and has not been washed for a bit. So I have a lot of plants and can't even get all by herself. And the other one seems like she can do everything mostly by herself. I don't think there's anything that she could do without the assistance or that she can do without the assistance of somebody else. So that's good, but you never know. It's scary not taking anything until I fill in the clue. So God has got this now. So I'm glad I got to connect more with everybody who went to go visit them and who the people that we were visiting were great people who visit the church and who are members of the church. It's just intense. And it feels great to get to know family as well. Not our own family biologically, but to get to know the sisters of the church who are just family. And you get to know the background, the context of your own life. And it's pretty cool. That's pretty nice. It's really, really cool. It's been a long time. I had a long life. I lived down here and I didn't come in and visit because I was like, I don't like my town. It's cool. I live down here, but now my family is not coming in here anymore. So, and I don't want to move because I feel nasty when I wake up. My breath is funky. <laughs> I feel like everyone knows. And I feel groggy. And ugh, like I want to sleep now. Not very much, no matter how long I'm up there. So, I don't like that. I like to like stay awake to get better at sleep. And we have our vigil at six for here. And I think it's ten PM and they start in at six PM and right now there's a board meeting for the church that I was supposed to be in. But first of all I wasn't there in time because I just got home from visiting the lady. So it's not fun. And it's been going on for how long now? An hour. not make all of the meetings in the world, especially when I feel like I need to, and I do, because I didn't get enough sleep last night. Thankfully, I got a good amount, though, because I was able to find my fall asleep immediately, like I always have been able to, thank God, although it was like at almost 2 in the morning, but the huge improvement from 4 in the morning, I just have not been able to feel sleepy until the car starts like going 30, and then I'm like, so hopefully it keeps cutting back and back and back. I'm going to try and be in bed early like I have been. Because if I start going to bed super late, then I feel like I'm going to erase all the progress that I could be having. Or I could be starting on it. So I'm not going to be going to sleep at that same time. No matter if I have nighttime plans. Like if I have an event or an activity with family and it gets going 30 I have a appointment by 8.30, and then hopefully be in bed by 10.30, and go to sleep at 11.30, yeah, because I don't like the panic of eating within three hours before going to sleep, I feel like I don't feel the best when I do that, so at least three hours before I go to sleep, and ideally more than three hours before so if I'm going, so if I eat dinner 8 p.m., then I should be going to sleep by past 11 p.m. so that my kids can have time to bed. That's the best way to try. Like I'm not trying to waste time and not trying to care about it because my pain and the way my body is right now. And I'm sure most of us take my energy because I need to stay awake from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. to make sure I'm all done and I have no more complaints to make. And so I feel like at all hours I want to go to sleep. Okay, I'll talk to you all later.
We have fresh fruit, so it's like just really tasty, really healthy, and then fresh veggies. We are running some errands right now. I don't want to put my phone close to the dashboard on one of my holders because then my phone is going to definitely overheat. So I'm keeping it here where there's some shade and my phone won't be exposed to the direct sun. I am going to hand in my rent for the month. That was very saliva -y. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> I even threw a raspberry like that by accident for the next month. And then after that, my plan is to go to my bank and hand in some money because I got a return on an event that I'm not going to anymore. And it's a considerable amount of money. I'm talking about more than 200. So I'm glad that I'm getting that back and I can use it for my expenses. Since right now I'm still unemployed and although I'm still getting paid for it since I'm using my vacation days that's gonna end extremely soon I'm still on the job time still reaching out to people trying to find and follow leads and it's tough out here I'm saying it's a binomics at this point because it's terrible for everyone that I know who's currently trying to find a job for those who don't have a stable job right now for those who are already graduated from college it's wild people who are in college too. People of all different types of educational and professional backgrounds are having a terrible time trying to find a good job in this economy. Trying to find a job, period. Even jobs that are minimum wage jobs and don't require that much experience on paper or 
do unreasonably. Like, you know those jobs that are minimum wage and then they're, like, two to three years of sales or retail experience? It's like, what? Like, how do you expect people to have experience for an entry-level job? That's wild. Like, are we supposed to be born already having experience in the womb or what? Like, are we cashiering in the womb? Are we making sales in the womb? I think not. So why is that happening? So whatever. Whatever. This is a weird news to start tonight. Okay, Clippers beat you tonight. Why? I think it's to protect this business in the corner of the street. I don't know. But it's hot today. A lot. I don't know exactly what temperature it is. Ooh, I went to the head. Oh, I'm so glad no one's in front of my property manager's office. So I can just talk to her. It's really nice. And I'm not used to that, so that's why I... No. That's why I called the location of my property manager's office. Let me go hand this in, and then we'll be off to the bank. I just called the Lowe's on Bucky's Town. This is the Lowe's on Women's Mill Road. It's right here next to the Wells Fargo, so I'm gonna go there instead. Even though it would have been cool to go over there, drive on the highway, get some fresh air because I am sweating today. I feel like you can't tell that much because you see my makeup and I'm just kinda like kinda looks like a dewy makeup look. Although it's literally just wet. But it looks good. I like it. And the sweat's gonna dry off anyway. It's gonna evaporate. So I'm gonna go to this Lowe's and I'm gonna check out their minute tea kiosk. Minute kiosk. Because on the phone, the robot, robotic woman was like, What can I help you with? And then I was like, Find out if I can copy a car key at this location. And then she was like, You can copy house keys, deadbolts, and car keys at our minute tea kiosk. And I was like, Okay, say less. And I'm sure they would have it here if they have it over there because Lowe's is bougie like that and all locations that I've been to are bougie so let's see if I can copy my car key finally because that's been on my to-do list since literally last year probably before this time because I lost my car key on the Bethesda Metro that one day where I almost felt like crying in front of everybody because I was like I'm so pissed off at myself this year I have this blank key that I bought online on eBay. It was complicated to find a dead, not a dead key, a blank key because I was searching online. I was like, how to copy a car key? And not many places have car key copying capabilities. Like the Walmart one, I don't think it has it because I searched there and it was only house keys. So I was like, well, and then I searched online on how to do it. And other people had done it with car keys similar to mine by by buying a blank copy of their car key and then having it engraved by a locksmith. They would go to a locksmith shop and they would engrave, cut out the blank key. No, how would you say it? Like cut out the actual car key from the blank car key. So I'm taking this just in case, but I'm assuming that if you go to a kiosk, all you have to do is present the key that you have at the moment and then it'll cut out a new one for you from blanks that they have in there so we'll see what we have to do the one that's supposed to be more accurate okay i'm gonna try again the other way the one, the two copier and hardware is supposed to be more accurate, but it didn't have my car key available, and neither did this one. This is the minute key kiosk. That's unfortunate, because they came in and I was asking about service, and they were like, the one in hardware is more accurate, but it says that this car key is not available at this location, which is sad, and I doubt that they have it anywhere else for Lowe's, at least, so... I think I'm just going to have to go to a locksmith for this one. I don't know 
why that's the case, considering it's a 2009 car. It's not that old, right? But how are they sometimes? So I'm like, should I go to Lexington now or should I not? Or should I make an appointment to go? Or would I be able to go in and get a key copied quicker? I'm going to figure that out right now. I found a spot. It's called Jane's Lock Service and it's close by, so I'm on my way there. I should be there in about five minutes. Hopefully they can make my key because I was looking at their services. They didn't answer the phone, unfortunately, so I'm guessing they're busy or they're just rude, but I'm going to figure out for myself. I'm still going to pull up and be like, can you copy my key? Because I was looking at the services tab of their Google Maps entry and it says car copying service. So I'm like, that's what I want to do. here on Google Maps maps were still in construction. It's crazy how fast they made these. Crazy. Bro, I'm so annoyed. It says on Google Maps that they're open 24-7, but clearly here it says Monday through Friday, 9 to 4. <gasps> Time to find another place. I feel like I should be at the beach because it's just hot and it would be delicious to be in the ocean with temperatures like this. And also, I have all of my beach supplies in my trunk because I forgot to take them out. I didn't know they were in there until now. I feel like I'm moving around in the back. And I have my pen, I have my blanket, I think. Or did I move them out? I don't think I have my blanket. I have my tent and then I have And my chair. So I'm like, intrusive thoughts are telling me to escape to the beach right now. Here we are at Able Lock Centers. I hope they're open. They're not open. Monday through Friday. They do have a 24 hour emergency lockout service at that number. So I'm gonna take a picture of that just in case I ever need it. The conclusion of all this is that I'm gonna have to come on a Monday Tuesday all the way up until Friday from 9 to 4 at either shop. I'm probably going to come here because it's closer to me than the other shop is. Unless I'm in the downtown area. In that case, I could probably walk or just drive to the other location that I went to first. I do not like being right behind this. Imagine if all this fell on me. No. They're going to be handing us out all of the beach supplies in the basement. I was supposed to go through the back to go into the basement and then go through the front and come up. But when I was going through the back and I was going downstairs, there were so many flies and I had no idea why I didn't see anything inside. And they're like dead anyway, so I was like, nothing's bad in here. There's nothing that flies would like to feast on. Although there was a lot of blue cherry down there and then also a lot of leaves. I'm thinking that is probably it. They can poison leaves because of the heat. So I'm going to get rid of them during the winter because in the winter everything is going to die. And there were so many spider webs, like webs and webs of spider webs. It was like a metropolis of spiders. So I'm like, I'm not going to get rid of that right now. Especially since it looked like there were a bunch of spider eggs everywhere. They were like sacks of spider eggs in the spider webs. And I'm talking about like five sacks per each web. So there was one on the top of a corner in front of the door in the basement and then there's one below that not directly but a little bit below that and each one had like five ish or more spider sacks so i'm like no not trying to break those egg sacks right now they can hatch whenever they want to but outside and not get inside that much i'm really hoping that doesn't happen and i don't think it will as long as they don't open the door seems like there's a good seal between the outside and the inside because of that door they need to the basement, so I'm just going to leave it there. I didn't mess with anything. It didn't open the door. I'm like, no, I'm not going to deal with this. I did get rid of some spider webs near the yard, the backyard entrance, because who wants to be catching that if you need to enter through that way to the backyard? So I got rid of quite a few near the, it was electricity or water meter, probably electricity, is what I'm thinking. And then the door itself. I'm just going to empty the hose area. I got rid of all of it with a stick. And then I threw it and blue started falling. And I was like, bro, we're just going to have to go in there because dogs are going to think. Obviously, they're playing fetch. 
so thankfully I don't think he touched it or ate it. There was nothing harmful on there anyway. It was just spider webs. I didn't see any spider egg sacs on those spider webs. So looking forward to cleaning that in the winter when everything dies and hopefully there won't be anything nasty in the way. Right now it's super hot. There were a bunch of flies down there. Literally when I went downstairs, so many flies came out in that area. It was disgusting. And they were flying all around. I was like, no, this is not it. So in the winter, there won't be this. And it'll be an easier job to complete to clean up that area. I'm going to have to take out all the leaves, all the decay. And that's okay because I can just scatter it around and let it decompose in the backyard. Or if I don't want to put it in the backyard, I can just put it in a yard waste bag. And then throw it in the garbage whenever the garbage pass is by. I'll leave it out on the curb. Right now I'm going to journal because I haven't journaled yet about yesterday's happenings. A lot happened yesterday. I've been thinking a lot, reflecting a lot, and it would be good to journal. I was like, I could do it with my iPad, just sit outside, but number one, my iPad is probably over here. Number two, I'd rather not journal while looking at a screen. I've done it before, and it gets tiring on the eyes, especially since I write a lot, and I'm going to, I just hit my mouth, so I'm going to journal in here. And use all the notebooks that I have as journals because I have a lot and I don't want to keep them around. And when I journal, I mainly do it just so I can get it on paper. I don't keep a lot of my journals, although maybe I should. I should try and limit my journaling to one page a day so I don't go through that many. But that'll be in the future once I get a fancy official journal because right now I have these notebooks that I've gotten at conferences, at different events during college. For example, this one. So I just want to use them up. The last time I journaled in here was before this, summer 2022. It was during my study abroad, actually. So I have notes in here from, let's see, from India, probably from later on, too. Wow, these are good entries. Okay, perhaps I should keep my journal to reminisce upon in the future hmm. i'll do that and i have up until the orientation we had in south africa and then i stopped i probably wrote down more information online because i had an online study abroad journal entry website for a scholarship that i had from fund for education abroad and that was great i like to write out my reflections and what i thought during the experience it was great loved it you can find that on my instagram bio link because there i have a bunch of links attached it's like a link tree type beat so when you click that link you can probably find study abroad fea it's a button called something around those lines and when you click it you'll see all of my journal entries i wrote one journal entry per week i believe and the experience lasted for about four months so there's a lot of content there I'm going to journal about yesterday's happenings while watching YouTube. I'm watching Mario Beatrice right now. And my boyfriend's going to get out of work soon. So we're going to go to a coffee shop that we recently went to. We visited two days ago and it was wonderful. I loved it. Good price for the goods. I'm not going to get a vegan cookie again because although it was good, it wasn't outstanding. And it kind of tasted a little bit like baking soda. A little bit. I know sometimes vegan goods have that flavor. It's an underlying flavor unless you really mess up the recipe, but I don't like it that much. If you do it super well, you won't taste it at all. Or you'll taste a tiny air of it sometimes, but I tasted enough in this cookie and I'm not that much of a sweets person anymore. It was when I was super young, but not anymore. So I'm not going to get a cookie, but I might get a burger. They have a vegan burger there and I don't think they have any other vegan goods, but I'm planning to eat lunch at that cafe hopefully it's good i'm gonna try and look at some reviews right now before i start journaling to see what i'm getting into if it's bad reviews across the board for that then i'm not gonna get it but if they're good i'll give it a shot sunglasses in his car. He's wearing his sunnies too. We like 
to protect our eyes from the sun, right? Yes. Yes. Because my vision is already not so good. So I can't afford to make it any worse than it gets almost every year. Although the optometrist did say that it could stop decreasing so much over the years because I'm already reaching that age, like around 24, I think she said, is when it should stop decreasing and it should stay roughly the same from year to year. Because ever since I was like 12, I think, around that age, 12, 13, my eyesight has gotten worse incrementally, yeah, by the year. Because that's what's supposed to happen, apparently, for people who have, what is it, astigmatism? When you can't see far. Oh, well, yeah. I think when you get super old, that's so when your vision so starts decreasing. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And that's why it's like, it's, it's worse. If you continue to decrease it, you'll be bad with it. I think it would continue depending on the genetics. I think for me it would because my mom, for example, she never needed glasses in her entire life until like five years ago. So maybe that's going to happen to me as well. Oh, I just want it to stop getting worse. It's going to stop, but then it's probably going to continue when I'm in my mid-40s. Huh? Yeah, no, it's not just my vision that's going to stop. So many Jeeps in this lot. It's like that Jeep show at the Wildwood Jeep. Today was definitely a good beach day, right? Too yeah, hot, it's, it's humid. It was good. It was felt like it was a good day and it didn't rain. It was sunny. I love road trips. So that support me. And then they're not going. our typical berry drink. What's the one that we like the most? Berry or something? Berry, I, I think it's the berry, isn't it the berry a la fresh? Yeah, berry a la fresh. But they didn't have it this time. So that's sad. Tell me how